hi, I think we'll get started. Welcome to Post Gallery. Um, I'd like to introduce Ellie Harrison, who's going to talk to us I'm sure she'll speak to for herself. But before you do that, I just wanted to just say a couple of words about what's happening in the gallery um, as part of the Vision One um, series, which no doubt you see all around you. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted just to explain what's happening this week, we've got a series of three weeks. Last week, gaming, playing things. This week, seeing things, data visualisation. So we're looking at this field of artists working with information, data, and making some kind of visual representation, or visual sort of um, mapping occasionally um, of the, that information. And the work that is normally on the screen, and you'll find in that room, is by Aaron Coben. And we're just printing out, it's only sort of open today, um, changing over every week, we're just printing out some more information um, about it for you. But just to, it will probably be ready by the time the talk's finished, but in case you're wondering what the hell is going on in that room, just to let you know, there's a loop of a number of pieces that are in there. The flight patterns you might have seen, the beautiful sort of light map that's, that, that's happening, that looks a little bit like America, it's actually mapping aircraft flying in and out of uh, Atlanta and around America, which creates this really beautiful sort of map of, of people travelling around um, that continent. Um, there's also another piece called Visualising Amsterdam, uh, and it's a map of S uh, SMS, SMS messages um, that are coming in at, open out of Amsterdam over a 24 hour period over New Year's Eve. And you'll see it peak at midday. So it's actually just sort of revealing with these tiny little light dots exactly each, where every single MS, SMS message is taking place. And it becomes a very towering form which shows you the quality um, of that information. And the last one uh, was a piece that was commissioned by um, Yahoo which traces Yahoo questions, and you'll see the question written on the top left of the screen. Um, so you'll see where it says in this Team USA, there'll be an awful lot of Yahoo questions coming up, certain parts of North America and Europe, whereas when it says cricket, you'll see it perhaps, you know, a slightly different demographic appearing, and, you know, interest happening in different parts of the globe. Um, so let's just have a look again when you've got some time and, and read about it. I'm going to tread on Ellie's time by talking to you more about that piece. But sorry that there isn't any um, information about that for you as you can. Thank you very much. I'm going to sit down. Um, I'm going to sit down as well, actually, but I'm just stood up at the moment. Can people see me if I sit here? Is that all right? Okay. Um, yeah, because I was told that this would last for about an hour, so I think my legs might be hurt and I'm stood up the whole time. Um, but, yeah, what I was going to start off by saying is relating my work to the Aaron Coburn um, exhibition, which you should all have a look at next door, it is really interesting. Um, he is kind of, in my eyes, a data visualizer extraordinaire, really. And what he does um, with his work is that he's able to kind of visualize the idea of the global. Um, and what he does really, really well, and if you go and look at the pieces you'll see, is to visualize the relationships between different people across countries and across continents as well. Um, and what he manages to do so effectively is to make millions of different journeys or millions of different communications that are happening every day that are normally invisible, he makes these things visible to us so that um, people are able to see them and also begin to comprehend them. So I think that quite neatly um, ties with ties in with the idea of seeing things, which is the title of this um, mini-series here in the photo gallery. So for the last eight or nine years I've been, that I've been working as an artist since I graduated from my BA in Fine Art, I've worked also in this business, if you like, of making invisible things visible in this field of data visualisation, which sounds incredibly boring, but hopefully I'll be able to make it sound a bit more exciting by the end of this hour. Um, what it says in this leaflet, which I recommend you all look at, um, and what I've sort of come to realise recently, is that the artist that I became was the result of this specific kind of period of in history, if you like, um, when I was developing my practice that I just happened to be living through. And the reason it gives in here 
for why people like myself and like Aaron were created. And I think this is a really interesting little blurb, is that it says that we, our work was powered by a proliferation of information and an evolution of new digital design tools. So there's two really important things in there. There's this idea of kind of information overload, if you like, and also alongside that, this idea that these new tools are available, and in my case I specific, specifically use internet tools, new tools are available to help us process this information, if you like. Um, so I think that both Aaron and I have knowingly or not been influenced by these significant changes in history that have happened kind of over the last 10 or 15 years since the birth of the internet, if you like. But what differentiates us um, is the type of data that we're kind of dealing with. And whereas Aaron, you're going to see, is dealing with found data, as I would call it, information that exists in the world already, um, the sort of data that I have become known for dealing with is data that I've collected myself and also data um, that is specifically about my own everyday life. So the way that I've done this is to take on these rather laborious and arduous experiments, if you like, um, where I have documented and recorded information about my everyday routine. So, Confessions of a Recovering Data Collector, which you can see up there, is actually the name of a new, rather small, but rather nice, um, little publication, which has just come out this year, which documents what I call um, these data collecting projects. Um, it also documents my conscious decision to, to try to break away from um, what you'll see are quite obsessive ways of working um, and kind of <coughs> give some, some, some of the reasons, if you like, why I decided to make the decision to quit data collecting. So what I'm going to do today is to show you some of the images and some of the films that I've created over the last five or six years um, and show some of the highs and lows of my data collecting past. Um, and then hopefully towards the end explain a little why I decided to quit this way of working and then show some of the work that I've been making since then um, as a recovering data collector. So I'm going to start off... Um, at the beginning of the story, which is 2001, this piece began on my 22nd birthday, and this piece is called Eat 22, and was the first experiment, if you like, of this kind, where I um, documented things that were happening in my everyday routine. So I decided, just before my 22nd birthday, that I would attempt to document everything that I ate over the course of the year. So this is just, I think, this is 60 of the 1,640 photos that I took over the course of that year. Um, and as well as taking photographs, I was also recording data about all of the images. So this is just a screenshot of one of my many spreadsheets where I record all of this information. So this is the beginning where you have the, the date, the time, the food that I was eating, the location, and then any other random little notes that I thought might be interesting. Um, so this is the raw data, if you like. The way that I um, ended up showing this piece, all the images are on the internet. There's a website, which is eat22.com. But I also made a film, which... I'm going to show now, but I have to just switch to DVD mode to do that. 